I wanted to start off and ask you what, um, and this might seem kind of trite, but I th- it kind of sets the tone really. Um, <laughs> what was the most uh, disturbing f- horror film you think you ever saw in the eighties and nineties? Because like I remember video nasties, like I mean I remember you know like an extra vision and stuff like that. There was that like horror section where yeah. they really kind of torn up videos or whatever and stuff yeah. like that. Do you, I mean, were you a big horror fan growing up or anything like that or? Yes, as in absolutely in the sense that when I was, especially when you're a teenager and you would have like sleepovers and yeah. you just bring all your mates over, you weren't sitting down watching hard hitting dramas. No. You, were, you, were, you were finding the movie that was going to scare the life out of everyone in the room. So yeah. that would make us all stay up all night telling like ghost stories. Um, and you know, you'd always go into extra vision, like we have an extra vision in Mullingar and you'd go in and you'd you'd scout the movie that you wanted mm. to see because it looked it had the 18 rating. And then yeah. what you do is you get your your mate's brother or sister to go in and rent it for you. And, and, <laughs> and then you know you'd bring it back. Um oh, yeah, someone asked me this already, but in uh like Chucky or Poltergeist or any of that? No, like- it was um Human Centipede. And I don't Ooh. know if that's from the nineties, but it was the most disturbing thing I've yeah. ever watched. Yeah. I don't know if you even watched it all, but it's just disgusting. Oh no, it is. It's completely disgusting. Yeah. Because there was a film I saw, I remember, and it still sticks with me to this day. I still think about it sometimes. Uh, Society, it's called. It is uh... mank. It is just, ab- and it's like, as bad as humans yeah. anyways but um i suppose my question then uh, the reason i asked that is because like i mean you know in looking at your 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 career like i mean without name was one of your first films and that was kind of a psychological horror thing and mm. i feel like censor as well i was really not expecting it to be so kind of um to, to use the word again psychological like there really is a sort of almost like jacob's ladder thing going on with yeah. it um I mean, were, I, I suppose, were your expectations, I mean, you hear the story, you hear the kind of concept, like, censor, video nasties, you think it's going to be that. I mean, were your own expectations challenged when you came to this, or? I had to educate myself a lot on video nasties. I didn't, I wasn't, it was before my time, and I, yeah, sure. I wasn't familiar with that whole genre. And I wasn't, I didn't know that, you know, they, they had been banned and had, had a link to, well, you know, they, claimed that they had a link to people watching something that was uh violent would carry out them to carry out violent yeah violent crimes and also just the, the role of a censor you forget you just kind of think oh that's a governing body mm. you forget like oh no people actually have to sit down and watch them mm. and it's even even now it was like with the amount of content that's available online is that you know there's factories full of people watching stuff that everyone uploads and they have to sit there and watch it and how much I suppose what this film explores is just how much can the human brain take yeah. before it could potentially crack um and what Prana was done with this is ex- the exploration of that that psychological distortion with with childhood trauma and yeah how something how that would have a devastating effect on someone and they would be carrying this this ptsd around with them um and you know just telling it through the, the this era of the video and nasties yeah i think you know i had never seen anything done like that before and i thought this is a, this is a really exciting project to be to be involved in yeah definitely i mean the idea of like a censor who has censored almost her own memory mm. like it's quite it's quite smart um i'm wondering though i mean do you find, and I get this is, I suppose, kind of more broadly about your career and stuff. I mean, are you drawn to films or TV shows or I, I suppose projects or whatever that have this sort of extreme, not extreme, maybe that's not the right word, but like they have a, the sharp kind of edge to it. Because like I think of like Raised by Wolves, like that's really out there and stuff. Yeah. And without name as well i mean even going back to like the savage eye like that was pretty <laughs> no but say i mean i know you were in like i know like that was one of your first ones but like savage eye was pretty groundbreaking for irish tv i yeah. thought like um, I mean, do you, or do you put that much thought into it like or no it just, jesus no it, you know everything happens for a reason and i think that like i grew up on a diet of channel four and film four yeah and a lot of the movies and tv that i watched is i suppose 
is now reflective of the work that I'm taking on. Yeah. But I think that's just because that's familiar territory and I understand those characters, but they're also characters that we haven't seen. I feel like they haven't been represented on screen. And I think when you, when you're given the opportunity to, to tell a story about someone who you can prejudge or who doesn't see the, themselves as a, the hero character in a narrative and, and, and make them the hero character, like with, yeah. With Enid, is she's such an unassuming woman. <laughs> she's, yeah. she's she's almost someone who wants to sit in the background, but yet has been forced into the into the limelight. And how how you could play with that? Like I'm a I'm very athletic and I'm I'm tall, and so to to take on the opportunity of playing a character that feels like she is she is kind of being consumed by the coat that she wears it's almost like that nearly becomes too much for her um so to 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 play the physicality of that and also to represent the idea of this psychological distortion that we haven't seen represented especially by a woman yeah. in a story i like guess there's you know there's, there's you could name so many um actors that have played um characters like this in in films but to, to be given this opportunity and present something that audiences haven't seen before is really exciting. Yeah. And I mean, I think, I think it's interesting as well, because like, I know, you know, w women d d do generally tend to, well, not generally, that's not the right word, but like, there is that sort of thing of like, you know, it's, it's the idea of seeing a female character that is, you know, is trying to pull themselves into the background and is trying to keep away from it and stuff. Um, that women do that to kind of almost protect themselves in a way because to be putting themselves out in front means to be exposing themselves to a certain degree and um, i'm just wondering just for, for your own kind of for you performing it and stuff like that i mean when do you kind of be, i mean when do you kind of begin to understand a character like enid and i mean does it come when you're handed the wardrobe does it come from the script does it come from when you're talking to prado and she talks you through the individual scene or how does it come? because like i mean as you say yourself like you're you know physically you're di different to what ian it is and mm -hmm. like even the other performances you've given they're quite different to to that like um with this you know the casting process it wasn't just as instant it wasn't as if um Pano rang me up and said, do you want to do it? Yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> you know, she she made me work for it. So it was making sure that she had cast someone who really understood this character. So a lot of the work that I had done had been done previous to the casting. And um, we worked on the idea that this is someone who is carrying around this a huge amount of baggage that she doesn't even know how to articulate. So how we how we were the the, the challenge of this was trying to how we were going to showcase that yeah. with, through different physicality and 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 because you know so much of it is is played up here that you can almost hear her thinking, but she almost she's carrying around this huge secret that she feels is a huge secret. So yeah, a lot of it was created beforehand and then when you when you begin to find out mentally where she is and then you put the costume on and then you that changes almost the way in which you sit and yeah. and then the glasses and the, the wig it was it was it, it was so rewarding to play a character that is so far removed from who I am both physically um and mentally yeah <laughs> you know it's it's a challenge and I love I love that challenge because it makes me work hard to understand why people do the things that we do. I think if you go on Netflix now, I think there's there's more documentaries on crime and mm. investigative crime and, and, and murders than there is on the kind of do-gooders of society. And it's because we're so intrigued by the human psyche and why we do the things that we do. Do you think that's a good thing, though? I wonder about that, like, because, I mean, I know, I mean, and again, this is, I, I suppose, a kind of a broader discussion, but, like, you know, I, I mean, I know there's, there's that kind of little moment in it when um, one of the characters says, like, you know, the reason people are going crazy is because it's, you know, the social, 
the social fabric, if you like, is disintegrating because mm. of conservatism or whatever. But, you know, like, I, I don't know, the, the, the idea of like kind of constantly, the, 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 a sort of luridness, if you know what I mean, but constantly exploring darkness and murder and evil mm. kind of stuff. Like, I mean, and I, this is just, just you, just wondering, just like, I mean, do you think it's, do you think that has a negative impact on society as a whole or do you think it's just we're always going to be fascinated by this no matter what because like i mean censor is set in the 80s and obviously that mm. was an issue then and here we are 30 years later like no i don't i personally don't think it it has a negative effect on it if anything it helps us understand mm. it and makes it you know you see people who are represented in society when they do something bad they're they're considered monsters and so yeah. therefore we dehumanize them and i think a lot of time when we make films and we explore in documentaries is that we we make them human again yeah and by doing that we can see what how someone can get to that point as opposed to like you look at the last the you know christopher nolan's joker and we're we're obsessed with the bad guy in it, but I think mm. that's just because you get more, like they made a whole film out of that because we wanted to know what got, what, how that person got to that point. Yeah. And you forget like when you watch something like Joker, that that is a superhero movie. It's not a superhero movie, yeah, but it's a yeah. Marvel movie. It, it seems more like a drama. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that's fascinating. Mm. Do you, um, I mean, going forward in your career, like, I mean, do you have, I mean, is there one actor that you would love to emulate their kind of trajectory or their kind of career? Or do you just kind of, are you taking that kind of one step at a time or what are you thinking? I think there's like so many people that uh, their, their career choices, the, you know, the people that they choose to work with always keeps you guessing. And I think that's an interesting one to never have someone pigeonhole you and you know, he's like, she's only ever going to do that one type of character. I think yeah. to keep people guessing is, and those, you know, Charlize Theron is someone that, you know, she goes from doing something like monster to the, the old guard and she's so versatile. And I think mm. that's that, that richness in, in your career is, is so rewarding, but there's, I don't know, there's, so many I, I love this i love my job <laughs> yeah yeah no it's great like i mean it's it's yeah like i mean it's definitely i mean i i i'll just tell you now i fucking loved raised by wolves i thought it was so <laughs> good no no seriously i thought you were brilliant in it and it was so cool as well like look she's from one like, like, yeah. like yeah yeah, yeah. No. so we, i've just finished on season two so yeah i can't wait to see what because it's it's such a visually visually unique show and so different to whatever anything else that i've done that it's so nice to kind of step outside and and look at it and and be a part of this big machine and see yeah. everyone's um see everyone's characters develop and also just to, the opportunity to work with the caliber of talent on that crew is hmm. you learn so much yeah do you find, I mean, I just, and this will be my last question, Glenn, before you have a heart attack. Um, do you, I mean, do you, do you kind of differentiate in any kind of meaningful way between like something like an indie like Sensor versus some big, huge machine like Raised by Wolves? I mean, you know, it's just work as work. Like. No, I, I, I like to think like I treat them all the same. Yeah. It's just, um, you're not going to act differently based off a budget. Yeah. I think you have to, you obviously get more time on larger budgets. Um, but then like some, it's interesting. It's like, you know, with someone like Raised by Wolves, like Ridley would shoot one or two takes and then move on. And we yet could have, could have shot, spent the whole day shooting that. Yeah. Um, and then you'd have other directors that would spend a whole day shooting something that you would have thought, thought would only take a couple of, a couple of hours. Um, but no, I don't think you, you need to, it's you don't need to act differently <laughs> and, and commit differently yeah based off of the size of the production cool yeah that's really cool cool all right thanks a lot thanks love there's this actress i've got this feeling that's nina 
Oh, my sister. You know, if someone did take her, then they're still out there. You've never been clear on exactly what you remember. You'd be surprised what the human brain can edit out when it can't handle the truth. Someone's losing the plot. I was wondering if you had anything else on this actress. What's going to happen to her? Without stop secret. People think that I create horror. Horror is already out there. And all of us 